And so now you have an algorithm for finding the interval representation. And I'm going to repeat an example. This one is a little bit more complicated, but not much. Oh, in fact, why don't All right, I'm not going to do it in class. When you get the notes, this is a good one. It's a little bit larger. Calculate the upsets and the downsets for this and see that it's an interval. It is an interval order, by the way. And find the representation and do the Dilworth problem for this post set. Okay. On the test archive, and, and for that matter, in the text, you'll find a number of uh, examples of this that you can work out. You'll find a number of post sets that you can test. All right. And now I want to emphasize this computational details. It not only finds an interval order uh, representation, it finds the one that has the minimum number of endpoints. Uh, it will always include some degenerate intervals. And if you want, you can modify it by doing this feathering stuff to make all the intervals non-trivial, non-degenerate, and if, if you want, you can feather it in such a way that you make all the endpoints distinct. And it, you're, the idea is if, if here's an integer and it's being used this way as a right endpoint and it's being used this way as a left endpoint, I take all these guys this way and I move them a little bit this way. And I take all the guys that come this way and move them a little bit this way. Now, don't, don't mix those up. Because if they come in like this and you pull them like that, that that's bad. You've got you to make all these guys a little bit more that way and all these guys a little bit more that way. Now, once you've got them out there, do whatever you like with them. Just feather them around. <coughs> the same thing over here. You do this in numerical analysis all the time. You fudge some numbers. You don't change their values essentially. Just change them a little bit to make them all distinct. Just... Standard dirty trick stuff. 